everybody. Uh, my name is Alexi, and uh, I, I see the second day is the same people. That's good. Usually, second day is half of a previous day, but uh, it's very exciting uh, event, and uh, I'm very excited to talk to you about the tools we do at Sci5. And my primary mission here is to talk about Duh, uh, the tool we do at Sci5. Uh, yeah, you can pronounce it Duh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but it's actually uh, Russian for spirit, Duh. Uh, actually, all Slavic language is the same. Uh, and before I talk about tool, I want to tell some personal story. And that was beginning of a century, 2001. And I was young, hardware, software embedded, PCB, anything, radio engineer, with a lot of experience. Seven years of experience in PhD. And I thought I know everything, everything. Yeah, I can do anything. And my teacher, who, who taught me very long, a long time ago, invited me to uh, some subtropical country to have some fun. Here you go. I go there. Uh, humid, very dense uh, rice fields, CSMC farms, uh, foundries, sorry. Rice farms and TSMC foundries, and nobody speaks Russian, and just few speak English. And um, I joined a startup doing SOC for PDA, uh, Taiwan, Sinchu. And um, I realized that my boss asking me something that I have no idea what to do. And he asked me to set up, design, reuse IP methodology for the co company who is doing SOC. So I found this book, which talked about Vaguely about reuse methodology uh, for system on chip. And I realized that I have to read the book because I have no idea what, what, what I need to do. And that, talk, that uh, book uh, was talking about SOC integration process, where you apparently taking multiple blocks, IP blocks, from different IP vendors, and you acting as a SOC integrator, and you're supposed to integrate all these different shapes and blocks uh, into one system. And I thought, what should I do? Uh, apparently, you need to instantiate this block, configure, generate, connect, test, uh, and so on. And uh, and apparently, one key aspect of this process is IP reuse. That was new to me. I was doing everything myself. And apparently, you can spend some time designing one IP which goes to multiple SOCs. That's nice. Uh, and why you needed that again? Uh, and apparently, it was for mostly for two reasons. One is uh, you sh if you share IP between multiple SOCs, you share design cost and uh, development cost, and you also improve quality. I learned the hard way that first SOC that takes IP in, get it with discount and 50% of probability of failure. Uh, second, uh, get it more expensive, and after 10 tape outs successful, you get what's so-called silicon-proven IP, and that costs a lot. So this life cycle of, of, of sharing cost and improving quality was new. And uh, I started learning what the good IP block is, and I learned that you have to partition your design, so you cannot just blob some very log of HDL to one box and say, that's it. Uh, it has a CPU, UART, and my proprietary interface, which nobody knows what to do with. 
uh, it has to have reasonable complexity, otherwise any intern can reproduce your work and you lose money. It also has to be very well documented and uh, the accent on that book was actually about well documenting your IP. And in the beginning I was excited about documenting IPs and later, later on, after now 18 years after that day, I see no change. Uh, we're still in the same situation. A uh, good IP block is still need all this and documentation is not good uh, in general, especially internally, if you're not publishing it anywhere. Like if you're not pushed to share it with anybody, then the documentation will be so-so. And a good IP block those days and nowadays uh, uh, required to be easy for integration and uh, need to some configuration and some generation. Those days it was Perl. Anybody remember what Perl is? Good. When you reinvent the wheel, you should try to remember what was the first wheel, right? And ease of integration, those days and now, mean about the same thing. Uh, it has to be some standard language, very low of VHDL. Taiwan was VHDL, or mostly very low. Europe was mostly VHDL. And um, it has to have standard interfaces, which now and then meant about the same thing, AMBA, AMBA Karamba. Uh, so it was APB and HB those days, now it's AXI, ACE, CHAI, whatever. Uh, and uh, you need some configuration tool for complex IP because it takes parameters and requires some generation and you need generation tool. It may be as simple as um, 100 lines of Perl or Tickle or, you know, full-blown generator. It also needs some machine-readable documentation. That's in, I asked about it and through last 18 years I get, uh, yeah, we should have something better than Word document which we can feed in a system and then computer understand what integration intent is. So uh, block configuration is an important thing because if you develop uh, any sufficiently big IP, you also have a lot of parameters you have to set uh, before you, you know, tape out your IP. And um, every company has own configuration tool. And most of the company doing IP not very good at configuration tools. They're not good at UIs. They're not good at software in general. So it's maybe Tickle, TK. It may be Java, best case. Maybe anything, but it's usually a uniquely, uniquely ugly configuration tool. And uh, some of them has CLI, so you can feed your parameters from common line. Some of them say, oh, just feed that unique configuration file written in some kind of language. And, or some people say, just, just take that defined like, header file and, and comment out whatever you don't need. <laughs> and that's it. So you basically modify the IP uh, source code. So block generation was an interesting scene. About the same time, 18 years ago, I discovered that writing very local studios. So let's do some autocomplete, yeah, template, Perl, search and replace, something that automated. Uh, this, and also Verilog has a lot of mechanisms like preprocessor which defines uh, and parameters and generate statements. And uh, if it's not enough, you get, get some sort of templating engine which uh, has embedded Perl and Python in it. And then uh, some people go to extend to write new DSL languages. Have you heard about some of them? Chisel, IPython, everybody has a language these days, and some people say, no, ultimate answer to all the questions is HLS. So I guess uh, it's not my game, uh, but you need to integrate all these blocks, and every uh, block has own 
uh, integration intent. And part of this integration intent is uh, what kind of parameters does this IP block expose to the world? And if you say go run that CLI, uh, go run that tickle TK tool and answer all, enter all the data, it's not interface. It's not, it's human interface, yet it's not machine accessible interface. So you have to provide some sort of constraints on the parameters that your IP would take uh, in some machine readable form. And this day is schema. There was XML schema, there was JSON schema, at least something that constrain your parameters. You also not need to t talk about ports, bus interfaces, and some software visible resources like re registers, fields, something that you can put in documentation and actually test. All this uh, is good. So uh, there are multiple uh, there were multiple talks about making such format, and there was even one attempt, uh, which is IP exact. It's ended up being disaster, not to my opinion, and ev everybody may have own opinion, uh, because every vendor trying to use that as a hook to bring. Uh, customers into their ecosystem. So they branched this IP exact standard file into a bunch of vendor extensions which lead you nowhere except for proprietary tools. And uh, it's actually not very good for complex generators, complex parameters for anything very configurable and very sophisticated. Anyway, so uh, at Sci-Fi we're doing <laughs> Yet another attempt, uh, very opini uh, opinionated, but yet another attempt to do this manifesto file. And our choice is JSON5, I don't know, probably because of Sci-5, uh, oh, probably because you, you can put comments in it. Uh, it's extendable, it's actually express parameter schema for your IP, uh, it has all the port, bus <laughs> interfaces, and it's generator agnostic and uh, means no matter what language you use, it's okay. It's just manifest about your IP. It's not biased to any language we use or you might use. And we made it open source. So just recently, a couple of weeks ago, we put it on GitHub and open sourced it. It's Duch. And uh, try it. I mean, re uh, go there, try. If you're interested, make comments, issues, pull requests. What is there? So parameter schemas I described, there is nice uh, standard these days called JSON schema. Uh, it's uh, JSON about constraints on a JSON. Similar idea beh behind any schema language, which uh, uh, any schema validation language. Um, which allow you to basically describe constraints, then you can run it, uh, use it for validation. You can also use it for documentation, or you e even can create UI. So out of this parameter schema, you can create UI in your, uh, you know, uh, UI generator of choice, which has fields and will ask all these questions, drill you, till you complete all the answers and give you a green mark saying good. So uh, there is link below, which is understanding of JSON schema, a very good book. Uh, and Duke format, uh, we call it Duke document format. Um, there are f several flavors and it may remind you IP exact at first because there is component document, there is bus interface definition document, and uh, design and, and several others uh, supporting documents. Um, and we uh, publish a Duk schema. Again, it's on GitHub, so if you need anything else in that schema, let us pull request. So Duk component will, will describe a component. And component in that sense, it's this IP block, which um, if you can break your big IP blocks into smaller ones, but if you cannot break it down uh, anymore, 
you have to describe parameters, ports, bus interfaces, memory maps, registers, and that IP block in this format. And uh, we also have bus definitions similar to IP exact, yet uh, I would say there is no standard place to go for IP exact bus definitions because Xilinx uh, and ARM and Synopsy has different bus definitions. Uh, we publish our own bus definitions in JSON5, very similar to IP exact bus definitions. And we built some tools um, in order for me to convince you to try do, uh, uh, I have to give you some goodies, right? So that's goodies. Um, you can uh, run some tools to create, author your uh, Duch document, import, export, uh, a lot of things. You can import your pin list, bus definitions. Uh, you can export Scala for Chisel. You can export black boxes. You can export uh, a few like TLM model, uh, a few other things. And you can build your own import export tool uh, on it. It's pretty straightforward how to do it. Um, it also has inference tools. Um, I will talk about it. And then there is also a way to validate your file quickly with the schema that I mentioned. And there are ways to build very quick and dirty UI without actually writing one line of code, which will take a schema, create a UI, where you answer the questions, and it will give you data. So do import tools these days. Uh, it's very early, early days of, uh, of this format. We created a few uh, like few tools to import modules, ports, registers, bus definitions, um, and we uh, we use very low, like we we have own very low parser and uh, system RDL parser, so you can take your files, uh, scrape for ports, scrape for registers. It's also open source. It's uh, on a, um, GitHub, and we have this sophisticated do inference. Uh, tool, which is almost like AI, uh, which takes a look at a pin list and like experienced engineer and say, oh, I, I get it. This is, this looks like AX interface. Let me uh, mark it as AX interface pins and map them into AX bus, bus definitions. Very sophisticated. have no idea how it works, but it works. Um, we hired AI specialists to do that. <laughs> it's also open source. Uh, and there are some validation tools uh, which are uh, pretty simple, yet they check that your file is actually in a JSON file format. Uh, it's, uh, it's some sort of compliant with the schema, and it's complete in sense of providing all information there, and it's cons this information is more or less consistent with what, um, um, you know, what we expect. Uh, on export front, we can export some documentation, TLM models, uh, black boxes. Uh, we can export IP exact. This will not be a whole information, a whole lot of information there, but we can export. Uh, also, Chisel and Scala. If you uh, embed in black, if you embed in some Verilog block into rocket uh, rocket chip and you don't want to learn too much Scala, uh, or you want some starting point where you just want to get some uh, get some Scala to start with and then maybe do some integration work uh, on minimum, you can use export tool, which will take this do file and generate Scala chisel uh, file from it, which is what we are doing for uh, IPs that come from from other vendors, and we need to integrate. That's high five. Um, so the format of this file and scope of whole project is way smaller than what all of is trying to do with a few SOC. It's just a format, so you can build own tools and package them as you want, but just use this format. I mean, if if you if you if you SOC 
uh, like the format, they can use uh, this format, right? So we are not insisting on any set of tools, any flow, any build procedure, any packaging, package management uh, procedure. It's all uh, more or less up to you, and you can build the, your own tools. And that's a link. It's kind of available for, on GitHub. It's also uh, available on NPM, so it's just NPM I do. It's mostly written in JavaScript, uh, runs all platforms. Um, Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Alexi. Do we have any questions? I was wondering, so it's interesting the point you mentioned about IP exact being basically a way for vendors to kind of, so is that, is that your opinion that IP exact, because I haven't used it a whole lot. I always thought it was probably the solution to things like this, but um, it, from what I've heard, yes, it does seem like you're right that vendors basically shoehorn it full of um, vendor-specific extensions, right? Is, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, okay. Thank you for a good question. Uh, first answer is that at the moment when IP exact was, was released, uh, XML was kind of yet relevant, and it was 2009. Uh, by now, it's not really uh, a, lang a language of choice in the internet or any way in software development. And I'm, I used XML, and I have uh, my own opinion about XML and IP exact. Um, I don't find XML readable, writable. I don't think IP exact is a wish, wishful thing for any IP developer. And I always saw it as a burden uh, for developers to provide this IP exact, and uh, there was little benefit of, of doing so. But uh, I will reference uh, some uh, great thinker of 21st century on, on that. And it's... And, uh, does your opinion change uh, on the last three years? No, I, I, I still think that. But I think that what you are doing uh, can just easily be transpiled to IP exact. Because I don't care if we have one standard or if we have two standards. Because as we, long as we have more than zero standards, it will be easier to just convert between them. You can convert to I, to from, from and to IP exact. Sure. That's fine enough. I, would, I want to iterate that, that this format is for everybody to contribute. So uh, my goal is that if you need some feature in there, <laughs> you just go and PR it and contribute. I don't want to create a new, <laughs> you know, Akaleda consortium for, for that. I just want everybody to contribute. So I worked with Accelera on IP Exact, and I guess working with sci fi is a lot easier than Accelera. Thank you. I do have one question, because one of the things I find hard with IP Exact, and you mentioned this also, is that uh, Xilinx has their own Ambabus VLNV, uh, others have their own, because what I think is lacking, what Accelera should have done from the beginning, was to have a central repository with a defined way on how to submit these things, because otherwise you will just have everyone doing their own stuff. Do you have an idea, so are you just doing this more ad hoc? Yeah, I, I think I like NPM uh, as a package manager, so any, anybody can publish, any can, anybody can reference. So there should be no centralized authority of who is publishing what bus spec. If you like mine, you just uh, you know, require my spec. And uh, it's actually for people to decide which one to use, which one to abandon. There should be no central place, uh, to my opinion. Fair enough. More questions? Let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you.